Hello, in this lecture we're going to briefly touch more circle and we're going to talk about the importance of this topic in chapter 5. Let's say we have an element like this with a couple of stresses on that. For example, we have normal stress in x direction, another normal stress in y direction, and shear stress. I want to tell you how to convert these stresses into the... how to read these stresses. Okay. Um, for example, For normal stresses like sigma x, sigma y, these stresses are positive when the normal stresses are in tension. Okay, so I'm going to say positive in tension. and negative in compression. Okay. The other type of stresses that we could have in uh, any questions is shear stress. Um, in order to see if the shear stress is positive or negative, uh, what we need to do is look at the uh, upper right corner at this point. Uh, if the both half arrows, these two should be half arrows. If the both half arrows come to this point, that means the shear stress is positive. Otherwise, it is negative. So for shear stress, for example, in this case, tau xy, because we have a 2D element, uh, that's positive if half arrows are converging to the to the upper right corner okay for example, let's say we have an another 2D element like this and let's say I have these stresses. I have normal stress like this. I have normal stress in compression, in y direction. I have shear stress like that and let me give some numerical value for these stresses for example um, for example this is I don't know 40 psi or megapascal or whatever so that's 40 uh, this one is 20 for example so this is 20 and the shear stress is 10 Okay, so in this example, normal stress in x direction, then the value is 40, this is what I can read from the graph, and because that's in tension, so that's positive 40, that's a contract. Sigma y, the value is 20, but because this is in compression, so that's minus 20, and sure stress... I look at this corner and because the two half arrows are not going to this corner so the uh, sign is negative and the value is minus 10 and the unit is whatever uh, it is given in the question okay so um, let's continue in a general case we can have an element like what we had so the first thing we need to do when we have an element is we need to read the stresses we need to read sigma x sigma y and tau xy 
for a 2D element, let's say. So that's the first step. And in order to go from this point to this point, we need to use this information. Okay. And once we get the stresses, and this element could be any point of the beam or a specimen. Once we get these stresses, we need to somehow find critical stresses. We show critical stresses with numbers and that they are just normal stresses. We don't have shear stress for critical stresses. So sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3 are critical stresses. So these are critical stresses now I want to talk uh, I want to I want to tell you how to find critical stresses from the general stresses uh, but before I want to do that I'm going to tell you what's going to happen after once we have the critical stresses once we get the critical stress once we get the critical stresses um, we can go to chapter 5 so this is, um, I can say, this is from the knowledge of your solids or um, uh, mechanics, mechanics of materials. And this is chapter 3. And from here, we go to chapter 5. For example, here you can be asked to find safety factors based on different methods, for example. Uh, based on maximum normal stress, based on maximum shear stress, based on distortion energy, based on uh, Columbus more circle, or whatever, um, or any other questions. If we want, if if we want to be able to answer these questions, we need to know about the critical stresses. Sometimes critical stresses are given to us, and we just can't find those things from the critical stresses. Sometimes critical stresses are not given to us directly and we have the general stresses. In that case, first we need to convert the general stresses to critical stresses and then find those values. Okay. In order to, in order to be able to convert um, general stresses to uh, critical stresses here there are two ways one of them is using some classical equations and the other one is using more circle okay um, what is those classical equations Those classical equations gives us two of the critical stresses. I'm going to say critical stress number I and critical stress number J. It could be one and two, two and three, or one and three. Okay. And that is the average stress, the average of normal stress, plus minus the amplitude of normal stresses, the difference of normal stresses to the power of two, and uh, divided by 2 to the power of 2 here, and plus shear stress squared, and square root of everything. Um, once we consider the positive one, we're going to find one of them, and once we consider the negative one here, we're going to find another stress. So two of the stresses can be found from these clo this closed form equation. And if you wonder what sigma average is that's sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 okay so that's a classical equation when we can get the two of the stresses from uh, general stresses okay For example, in our case here, sigma x is plus 40, sigma y is minus 20, and tau is minus 10. 
So if I want to find two of the stresses here, I can say sigma 1 and, okay, sorry, sigma i and sigma j equals to sigma average, average of these two numbers, 40 plus minus 20 is 20, divided by 2 is 10, 10 plus minus 40 minus minus 20 is 60, 60 divided by 2 is 30, 30 squared is 900, plus, and that was 10 to the power of 2 is 100. So that will be 10 plus minus, that will be 1000. Okay, so one of the stresses, I'm going to say sigma i is... Ten plus ten, ten and sigma j is ten minus ten. Okay, so that's the first way how to find two of the critical stresses. Uh, the second way, and then I'm going to talk about the third one. The second way is using Moore's circle. In order to use this method, uh, we need to define three points. The first point that we need to define is, I call that point, point x. And that point has x and y value. The x value is normal stress and the y value is negative uh, sure stress. For point y, the x value is the other normal stress, sigma y, and this time the y value is plus shear stress and finally the point C is the average stress and zero okay uh, once we get these two these get, get, once we get these three points we can draw um, we can draw a more circle for example um, what we need to do here, we need to make a Cartesian coordinate The horizontal axis is always our normal stress and the vertical one is the shear stress Okay, so we need to uh, find these three points uh, in this uh, coordinate. For example, let's say this is our sigma x and if tau xy is whatever, like let's say this is minus tau xy. So that's one point, for example. So that's point x. Let's say our center is, for example, here. So that's point c. And let's say our point Y is, for example, here. Okay. And there are a couple of things that are important for us at this point. These three points always make a straight line. So if I want to, if I can um, draw a line here between these uh, three points, that line should be straight so the y won't be somewhere here or here like it's always along this line okay and the other thing is um, this c is the center of the circle more circle and the points x and y are always two points of the more circle so if i want to draw a more circle for this one
for example, that will be the Mohr circle. So X and Y are two points of the uh, circle and C is the center of the radius, in center of the circle. Okay. Let me... Okay, in this Mohr circle, uh, we said that the point C is the center. So the radius of this Mohr circle, like this one, can be found from uh, the numerical value that we have uh, for the question, for example. This is R, this is R. This is R, this is R, R, R. Okay, so there are a couple of important things here that I want to mention. Um, the first important point is two of the stresses that we found, uh, previously we found from uh, the classical equations uh, in this case, they will be, uh, okay, let me change the color to the black. In this case, sigma i and sigma j These two will be the average stress plus minus a radius. And this point C shows the average stress. Okay, so two of the normal stresses, two of the critical stresses, one of them is this point and the other one is this point. Because if that's the sigma average plus R gives us this point and this center minus R gives us the other point. Okay, so that's the first important things from the Mohr circle. The second one is the maximum shear stress. That's the shear stress axis. The maximum happens at this point. And the magnitude, the value of that point is the same as the radius of the Mohr circle. Okay, so in general, whenever I see more circle, uh, if I want to find the critical stresses, I just look at the intersects. The intersections of any more circle and uh, uh, horizontal axis, which is normal axis, uh, gives us the critical stresses. So if I didn't know anything about this one, if I had this circle, I said, okay, this is one of my critical stresses and this is the other uh, critical stress. Okay, let's come back to our example here. Um, sigma x is minus four, uh, four, plus 40, sigma y is minus 20, and tau is minus 10. Okay. So I'm going to just rewrite them here. Sigma x was 40. Sigma y was minus 20, and sure stress was minus 10. 40 minus 20 minus 10. Let me double check. 40 minus 20 minus 10. Okay. I want to draw a more circle for this one. First, I need to find point X. Point X is the first normal stress. Minus minus 10. This is 10. Okay. Point Y. That is the other normal stress. Shear stress minus 10. And point C is average stress. 40 plus minus 20 divided by 2, so the average of these two will be 10 and 0. Okay. This is my normal axis and this is my shear. Okay, uh, point 40 and 10. 
so if let's see if it's 10 20 30 so that's 40 and plus 10 okay so that's 10 so that's one point here point minus 20 and minus 10 is 10 minus 20 minus 10 that's the second point so that's point x that's point y and center is 10 0 this is the center okay so I showed the three lines the three points uh, in the system then what I need to do I need to draw a line which is not necessary but and then I can draw my more circle um, with the center of C and the radius of this much okay Okay, let's say that's a more circle. Um, maybe, uh, let me just move it a bit. Okay, um, so at this point, uh, we said that we needed more circle to find the critical stresses. So I'm looking for the critical stresses. So once I get the more circle, we saw we said that these points, the intersects of more circle and normal axis, are uh, these points are our uh, critical stresses. Two of the critical stresses. Okay. So sigma i will be sigma average minus r so this point let's first find the radius okay i'm gonna find the radius here r is this is 10 this is 10 20 30 so r is 30 squared plus 10 squared square root of this one which will be 10 10 okay so uh, the average stress is uh, the first um, critical stress is average stress minus r so average stress here is 10 minus r is 10 10 okay so this is one of the critical stresses and the other one sigma j this guy is average stress this one plus r plus r so sigma j will be 10 plus 10 10 whatever unit it had okay so i found the two critical stresses based on the more circle i draw that one i just found the intersects um okay Now I want to talk about uh, the the third critical stress. Okay. Um, the third critical stress, for example, if I have this case sigma x sigma y and tau xy if i want to find the third critical stress for this system first things i need to know is third critical stress is okay um 
I need to look at the shear stress. This shear stress is based on x, y. Okay, so the variable that I cannot see here will be my third critical stress. So the third critical stress is normal. We said that critical stresses are all normal stresses. And this guy here is sigma z. Because because this is tau x y. For example, let's study another case. If I had sigma, if I had sigma y, sigma z, and tau y z. In this case, my third critical stress will be because here I have y z, so that will be x. So the variable that we cannot see in the shear stress comes to this point. Okay. Uh, let's study third case before I want to go to this general one. For example, I have sigma x, sigma z, tau y, z. So in this case, the third uh, critical stress is whatever I cannot see here, which is x. Okay, so now I want to come to the first example, this example. Um, in this question, sigma x is given, sigma y is given. So sigma 3, because it doesn't say anything about it, so sigma 3 is 0. Because it doesn't say anything about sigma z in this question. You just have sigma x and sigma y. Okay. In this example here, sigma 3 is sigma x from sure stress. So if you want to know what that is we need to look at the shear stress if we want to know how much is how much it is we need to look at the normal stresses so sigma 3 sigma x sigma x is it given to us you have sigma y and sigma z no it's not given so that's zero i mean for example this is given to us this is 10 this is minus 20 you know that's an example this is for example minus 30 whatever the same thing here So let's go for the third example. In third example, sigma 3 is sigma x. Sigma x, is it given to us? Yes, this is sigma x. So in this case, sigma 3 is um, 10. OK, um, I need to correct something here. Uh, I don't want to say sigma 3. I want to say sigma k. Um, I'll tell you why. So the third critical stress is I don't call it sigma 3. I call it sigma k because I had sigma i and j. So that's my sigma k. OK. So for example, if in a case that was our more circle, if in that case, we have a, if you had an example and you found point C, point C was here, and if you found point X, so that was point X, and that's point Y. First, um, first thing that we need to do is uh, pointing out the critical stresses. So this is one of the critical stress. This is another critical stress. If we found these two based on the Mohr circle, and we're gonna find a third one based on the like based on these things. Like in ninety percent, that's the third one is zero. 
but maybe it's not zero maybe that's a number i'm gonna say that okay i'm gonna assume that that's a number for example that's the third critical stress so i showed all of them in the graph and we said that between we said that more circle um, shows the critical stresses so based on this one we need to have one more circle between each two critical stresses between these two critical stresses we already have one more circle okay so but between these two we don't have any more circle yet so what we need to do we need to draw a more circle between these two points Okay, so I have one more circle between these two critical stresses. I have one more circle between these two critical stresses. What I need to have is another more circle between this critical stress and this one. Okay. Okay, uh, this is called 3D more circle and we have like three more circle here. So in a general case, sometimes you are asked to uh, draw all three more circle. And when you want to do that, we need to draw a general or the pre premier uh, or the first more circle first. And then based on the knowledge that we can get about the last critical stress, we can draw the last two circles. Okay, there is a very important contract here. And that contract says, we want to name these, these points, these critical stresses one, two, three. Um, the contract says, we want to name them in a way that sigma one uh, is the lowest critical, um, Sorry, sigma 1 is the highest critical stress and sigma 3 is the lowest one. Okay, so for example, in this case, we have three stresses, that's the highest one. Okay, so I call this one sigma 1, I call this one sigma 2, and I call this one sigma 3. Okay, so we named the uh, critical stresses based on the value. We, we named, the, we call the highest one sigma 1 and we call the lowest one sigma 3. Okay, here um, I want to consider cases like this where the third stress is 0. So when sigma k is zero okay um in those cases we said that we find the more circle based on the uh, based on the question okay so let's say this is our case and we draw the more circle and that's our more circle um so if that's our more circle Uh, this means that this is one of our uh, critical stresses and this is the second one. And because the third critical stress is zero, so that's the third critical stress. So that's sigma one, that's sigma two, and that's sigma three. Okay, so I need to have one more circle between between these two critical stresses
I need to have another more circle between one and third critical stresses. And I'm done with this example. Okay. So let's see uh, another case. In general, more circle could be either in the right hand side, in the right part of the coordinate, or in the left part of the coordinate, or some part of that could be in the right side, some part of that could be in the left side. And I'm going to analyze uh, the whole, uh, all, all, all the cases here. So in this case, um, these two again will be two of our critical stresses and point zero is the third one so we call the highest one sigma one we call the middle one sigma two and we call the lowest one sigma three the difference between this case and the previous case was in the previous case in this case sigma three was zero but in this case sigma two is zero okay um, so I found the critical stresses now I need to draw more circle Okay, I need one more between these two. And finally, in the third case scenario, um, this will be one of the critical stresses. This is another one, and zero is the third uh, is the third critical stress, which is sigma one in this case, because it has the highest value. So that's sigma one. That's sigma two. And this one is sigma three. And I'm gonna draw the more circle now. Okay, so here, as you see, sometimes um, the two more circle are both of them, one of them is outside of the first one and the other one is like the biggest one is always like covering the two smaller ones. And uh, sometimes we have two more circle inside our um, initial more circle and sometimes it's not like that. Okay. Uh, before I want to go to those examples, um, I'm going to mention one uh, important point and that is about defining uh, some shear stress. Okay, um, if I want to define shear stress 1 over 3, that is normal stress 1 minus normal stress 3 divided by 2. If I want to define shear stress 1 over 2, that is normal stress 1 minus normal stress 2 divided by 2. If I want to find shear stress 2 divided by 3, it's normal stress 
two minus three two. Um, so this is shear stress one with respect to three, shear stress one with respect to two, and shear stress two with respect to three. And this is one hint that um, I had to say before I go to the examples. And if I come to these ones, like the biggest one, this one here, you see we have stress. Uh, let me change the color here. And I have shear stress one and shear stress three. So I can say this one shows shear stress one with respect to three. For example, this is shear stress two and this is shear stress one. So this circle is shear stress two with respect of one or one with respect of two if I want to keep the notation. One. one with respect of two and this one this is between two and three so that's sure stress two with respect of three okay that was just one point that for example here this is between one and three so that's one or with respect of three and whatever and here again that's one with respect of three so you always you see that the biggest circle is always uh, one with respect of three which makes sense because we sorted normal stresses in a way that uh, sigma one was the biggest one and sigma three was the lowest one so if i want to compare these three ones uh, i see that the denominator of all the fractions are the same it's just number two and the denominator of this one is a difference between the first two critical stresses and this one is between the last two critical stresses but this one the denominator is the difference between the highest and the lowest critical stresses. So this guy, this is the maximum. Down the road, if you want to want if you want to use the maximum sure stress, you need to use that one. Okay. Let's see some examples. Uh, draw more draw a complete more three circle diagram okay um, so I'm gonna do uh, number a okay Sigma X is given to us that's 12 so I'm gonna just rewrite that Sigma X is 12 Sigma Y is 6 shear stress uh, x y is given to us and that's four okay uh, so here in this question like i have these two normal stresses uh, but for the shear stress it says that this guy is clockwise so i don't know if that is positive or negative so there's a question mark here okay let's continue let's see if that's important for us to know if that's negative or positive um Okay, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make an assumption, number one. My assumption is the sure stress is positive, okay. Okay, um, so I want to draw more circle. In order to find more circle, I need to find those three points, x is um, 12 this guy 12 uh, minus this guy minus 4 my y is 6 this guy which is 4 and the center is the average of these two 12 plus 6 is 18 divided by 2 is 9 and 0 then I can come To my graph like for example um, that's my more circle like uh, that's the uh, coordinate so this is shear that's 
last year and that is normal okay uh, so 12 minus 4 for example uh, let me first draw the circle maybe not let me go step by step um, okay so 12 plus 4 let me delete this one because I don't need that many positive things okay so 12 this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12 minus 4 so this is this point So that's my first point, my point X. Point Y is 6, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4, this is 6, 4, yes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. So that's point Y and uh, center is nine zero one so that's six seven eight nine I think that's the center okay so if I draw a straight line that straight line will go through all these points okay and now I can draw my more circles. Uh, so let's say this is our more circle in this case, okay? So now I want to in this question I just asked to find it uh, those three more circle um, What if I if I was asked I could uh, find the critical stresses as well these the intersects, but I just want to draw the more circle um, Okay, so I'm coming back to the examples, the question here. And I see that the tau xy is given to us. So I know that the third critical stress, sigma k, is my, this is xy, so this is sigma z. Sigma z, is it given to us? No, so that's zero. So uh, I come to this point and if this is one of my critical stresses, this is another one, the third one is this one, which is zero. So I can easily draw the other two more circle. That's one of them. And okay, so these are my three more circle. And if I want to name the critical stresses, um, I can say this is the lowest one. So that's sigma three. The middle one is always sigma 2 and the highest one is sigma 1. Okay, so I did that one with this assumption that tau xy is positive 4. Now I want to do the same thing, the same question, 
with this assumption that sure stress is so here I assume that's positive here I want to assume that this is negative okay my x in this case will be at 12 that was positive here in this case that's that was negative here in this case that's positive my y will be 6 minus 4 and the center um, will be 9 0 okay I don't want to draw another one I just want to uh, show those points like here um, so that's my x I'm gonna call that one x bar y bar and c bar okay I want to show those points uh, in this one okay so uh, x is 12 plus 4 so that's 12 so I'm gonna go up 4 up so that is my x bar y is uh, 6 minus 4 so that's my 6 I'm gonna go 4 down so that's my y bar and c and c bar are the same so if I wanted to draw a circle between these points uh, what I needed to do I needed to draw a straight line like that and then I'm gonna make the same circle here and sigma 3 is again 0 so I'm gonna get the same answer so um, here you see that the assumption um, like it doesn't matter what we assume um, at the end of the day we're gonna get the same answer okay so you shouldn't if you want to just draw the more circle you shouldn't be worried about what to assume but But if you want to know the real things, when we have clockwise something, like for example, in this situation, that's clockwise, that means the shear stress is negative. When we have counterclockwise, that means the shear stress is positive. Okay, so in this case, because that was clockwise, that was the actual case. But you see that I assumed the wrong one, but I got the same answer. But I suggest you for the exams, you just use the correct assumption, this one. Okay, let's jump to the second example. Uh, I don't want to go in details, I just want to do it very fast. These examples are number 17 and 18 of Shigley's book, Fans Edition, so you can read them after. The second one, sigma x, y, and tau x, y is given to us. Okay. Um, in this example, sigma x, so I'm in this one, x is 30, sigma y is minus 10, and tau x, y is 10 counterclockwise so that's positive here okay um, so I don't want to do that I just want to give you the like the some hints to how to do that so from this one from this x y we can understand that the third stress I'm gonna call Sigma K is Sigma Z because Z is not coming here okay and because I don't have anything about Sigma Z here so that is zero okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the more circle bit uh, based on these two numbers and
so this is my normal uh, access and this is my shear one I'm gonna find those three points x y and z x y and c and I'm gonna draw my more circle for example that's my more circle okay so in this case um, this will be one of the critical stress and th this will be the third one uh, sorry uh, the second one so uh, we can find these two based on the Morse circle so this is the Sigma 1 this is the Sigma 3 and this one is Sigma 2 so if I come back this Sigma Z here is actually my Sigma 2 in this case then I have to have two more circles one between these two and one between these two okay so I'm done with this example Let's go to example number three, this one. Sigma X is given to us, that's 40. Sigma Y, no, sorry. Uh, sigma Z is given to us, that's minus 30. Ta X Y is given to us, that's 20. Okay. Again, in this case, I look at this one, this index here, subscribe, and then I found that the sigma third one, sigma k, is my shear, uh, sorry, it's my normal stress uh, with a subscript that I cannot see here, so that will be z. Then I come to here, okay, sigma z is given to us, this is this guy, so that's minus 30. Okay. So in this case, uh, sigma x is not given to us. So sorry, sigma y is not given to us. So when it doesn't say anything about that, that means this is zero. So I'm gonna find those three points. I'm gonna find point x, which was sigma x and minus ta x y. So that will be sigma x this example will be 40 and for tall we said that we look at this one so that's counterclockwise this means that this is positive here so they're okay so that is positive so minus positive is negative so that's minus 20 point y point y is sigma y which is zero okay i'm gonna write the equation sigma y and ta x y sigma y which is 0 ta x y is 20 and the center is the average sigma average and 0 the average between sigma y and sigma x 40 plus 0 divided by 2 is 20 so that is 20 and 0 So I can come here and I can say this is my shear axis. This is, let me check the way this one. And this is my normal axis like this. I'm gonna show the points and the graph. So my point X is 40 minus 20. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40, minus 20, that's one point. Oh, sorry, minus 20. So I need to go 
one more down so this is minus 20 this point uh, point y is 0 plus 20 so that's this point and center is 20 0 so that's my point x that's my point y that's my point c so I can draw a circle here Okay, so that's the more circle and I can show the critical stresses. This is one of the critical stresses. This is another one. And the third critical stress is minus 30. Okay, so that's the minus 10, minus 20, minus 30. So that's the third critical stresses. So I have these three critical stresses. So I need to draw one circle between these two. I have already, I've had one between these two. I need one between these and this. So I'm gonna draw the third more circle between these two. Okay, so here you see that like you don't have the center origin here because this third critical stress was not zero, was the non-zero value. And finally, the last example in the last example, we see that sigma x and sigma y is not given to us, sigma 1 and sigma 2 is given to us. And we said that by sigma 1 and sigma 2, we mean the critical stresses. So first, let me rewrite what I'm given here. So sigma, uh, sorry. So sigma 1 is given to us 50, sigma 2 is given to us minus 20, and it doesn't say anything about sigma 3. When the question doesn't say anything about anything, that means that thing is zero. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to have shear stress axis and normal stress axis. And then because I have the critical stresses, I can just show the critical stresses on this point and this graph. Okay, sigma 1 is 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 50 minus 20 and 0 so so if I come back to this one I can say sigma 1 here is really my sigma 1 sigma 2 is sigma 3 and sigma 3 is sigma 2 because sigma 3 0 is not the lowest one okay so so that is my sigma 1 the highest one that is my sigma 3, the lowest one is minus 20, and this is my sigma 2, the middle one. And then I need to draw more circle between each of these two points. Um, I'm going to draw one more circle between these two. I need one between these two. And I need one between the first and last one. Okay, and I'm done. I don't need to find x, y, and center, because in this example, uh, those three uh, general stresses uh, didn't uh, given it, they they weren't given. So what I had was just critical stresses, and that was so easy. I just had to uh, point and point them out in the graph. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to email me. And if you need, if you think that you need a note, uh, you can comment below, or you can send me an email at engineeringfun2016 at gmail.com. And I will provide you the notes. Thank you.